Hey guys, this is Ronnie from Southern Food Junkie. And if you've watched my last two videos, you've noticed that they've been a restaurants from Edisto Island, South Carolina. I wanted to share this little narrated video along with some uh, video clips from the island. And uh, we'll get to it. So we went to Edisto Island for about a week. Um, we left on a Saturday. And we got to Edisto Island. Uh, took about three and a half hours from where I live. And on Sunday... I had planned on going to uh, Botany Bay. Botany Bay is like a four or five thousand acre um, piece of property that was donated to the South Carolina Department of Wildlife. It used to be uh, two uh, Sea Island cotton plantations. I think they've had it since 04, 06, and it's been open to the public. It's a very unique place. Uh, it used to have trees that went all the way up pretty close to where the uh, the uh, sea would come up, or the ocean would come up, but it's a, it's a barrier island, and now there's all these dead trees. You see You see a lot of pictures floating around on the internet from Botany Bay, of uh, trees, uh, driftwood, and uh, there's lots of conch shells and different types of shells that, that uh, come up in this area. And uh, people will take the uh, shells and hang them on trees. It's like kind of like a little tradition thing. So uh, anyway, we went there. <clears throat> the, the plan was to get there early before high tide, which was at 10 o'clock. We were going to go fish. This, they, had a, they got a lake in there called Jason's Lake. It's kind of in the middle of the property. And uh, the intercoastal waterway, some of the there's some of these uh, tidal creeks that actually feed this lake. It's full of flounder and uh, 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 redfish, spot tail bass, what have you. Anyways, we went there, of course, with the kids and the family and uh, the drive. We didn't end up getting there till 12 o'clock, so it really messed up the fishing part. But we had fun. It was really, really, really hot. It was the middle of the day, so everybody. And this was probably the hottest day on record for South Carolina this year. Dew point was high, <clears throat> humidity was high, so anyway, the water, the tide was out because we missed the high tide and it was on its way back out. So you can see from the pictures here, we kind of set up camp along the banks. Um, found a, a crab there that had uh, been laying out in the sun and, and he done turned red, so we didn't end up catching anything there. So anyway, uh, we cook. We uh, some of the other stuff that we did at Edisto was ride our bikes. the bikes everywhere this week. 13 and a half miles to be exact. Um, another thing I did, the bonehead thing that I did was I uh, uh, planned on uh, catching some shrimp while I was down there in the throw net. So I had scoped out this area on Google Maps and uh, I had found the perfect place to launch my kayak. It was in a creek. Um, so when I first pulled up, I noticed that it had rip wrap around it. And um, I was so excited. I went down there with the throw net, threw the throw net one time. Perfect circle, beautiful cast. Hung the net, tore it all up. I borrowed the net from my brother. I knew he was gonna be mad at me about it. But uh, I finally got the net to pull up. It was shredded to pieces. I, I had a bunch of fish in there. I could see them popping up. So that kind of set the, the mood kind of bad for the week. But the next day I went back to this spot and I was walking on the rip wrap and I noticed a little minnow trap down there. So I thought it was just somebody had lost it at first. I'm, I'm like, I don't know, seven or eight foot below the bank, down below the normal water line. So I'm, I'm down in the canal I'm not really on anybody's property. I'm walking around there. I pick the trap up. It has a, a piece of rope that goes up to the bank. 
So I was like, oh, somebody didn't set this in here and then got it stuck. So I'm going to throw it up on the bank. <clears throat> and this guy comes flying across the road, hollering at me, telling me I'm trespassing, all this stuff. So that kind of, with, with those two things right there, it kind of set the week, uh, started off kind of bad for me. But we ended up having fun. Like I said, I rode around the island on the bike. Uh, we rode the bike just about every day. Rode to the beach access. Um, another cool thing about Edisto is they have the uh, loggerhead turtle project going on. They started it 20 years ago. Um, they said that loggerhead turtles, uh, once they're born, they go out into the ocean and hang out in the ocean for about 20 years before they are able to have babies and they'll come back to the exact same spot that they were born. So uh, they started this project about 20 years ago where they monitor the nest and, and try to do preventative uh, maintenance on them to help them, um, you know, have a successful hatch rate. So uh, this year they had the most nests that they've ever had and the program's been going on roughly around 20 years. So that was the reason why one of the, the volunteers told me that it was doing so good. So uh, we uh, watched the watched them dig up a nest of eggs that, that hatch like three or four days before they dig them up to see if they have any uh, turtles left down in there that's hatched that couldn't get out. Uh, they say that the ones on the bottom hatch first and they climb their way up through and then the ones that are on top are, are left in the bottom and sometimes they have a hard time getting out the hole. So uh, uh, about Edisto Island, <clears throat> Edisto Island has no franchise restaurants except for Subway. Um, we, we knew this in advance because we have a bunch of friends and family that go there, so we brought a bunch of our groceries with us. There's one grocery store on the island, and it's Bilo's. There might be about eight or nine restaurants, maybe, maybe a little bit more. Um, most of them are local-owned. Um, we did a review on McConkie's uh, Jungle Shack, which was an open-air restaurant. The um, seating area, they have a screened-in porch, and then they have an unscreened-in porch. It's a really cool place, really, really play, good place to eat. Uh, there's also the Sea Cow Eatery, which we wanted to try but never got around to. Um, ocean Front, it was called, something called a beach, beach Front Eatery. And then we also ate at Whaley's right here, we did a review on. And uh, Whaley's was pretty good. Um, supposed to be like a top 25 dive seafood restaurant in the country. Um, I liked it, but I've been told that I should have got some other things there by some local people since I released my video. So next time I go back, I'll definitely try out those recommendations. We did while we was at Edisto is we cooked dinner almost every night, except for the two nights that we went out for uh, supper. We had a uh, low country bowl one night. We also cooked uh, salmon. This is the, uh, I had four fillets of salmon like this. I took two bag, two gallon size Ziploc bags to Edisto with me. I gave a gallon uh, away to one friend. I gave another gallon away to a neighbor. And I gave another gallon away to uh, one of my cousins and, and our, her husband and, and their family ate it. So that was a very good meal. We had uh, chicken kebabs one night. With chicken, peppers, onions, pineapple on it. And uh, we used a teriyaki marinade and um oh we cooked hamburgers one night and the last meal we had was tacos so we ate really good while we was there we had uh, breakfast uh, we would alternate pancakes and bacon or pancakes and sausage and then the next morning we would have Paint, uh, I'm sorry, we'd have grits and eggs and bacon with that, or either sausage, that kind of alternated every day. Um, but Edisto, um, they, they recommend not drinking the water there. 
the water is, is very brackish and you can taste it when you're taking a bath you can taste it when you're brushing your teeth so uh, anything that you're going to be drinking you need to bring your own water um, you can go to the fire department which is located on Murray Street and the fire department has uh, a place where you can fill up your uh, gallon jugs or whatever you bring with you you can fill it up there it's filtered and uh, that's what most of the local people around there do and people that's been coming here for a long time instead of uh, and that's what we did we bought six gallons with us you know water a gallon water is like I don't know 79 cent once we used that up we took it to the fire department and filled them up and then come back and um, but there's good news they are building a reverse osmosis uh, water treatment plant um, I think maybe next year it'll be done. So that's pretty good, uh, you know, news. Um, also, while we was here, we stopped at, um, we went to the, the Bay Creek Park a few times. Uh, one of the times we was there, they have a, uh, there's not much there um, as far as like playground or stuff like that. There's a big green area and there's like a little amphitheater where they have concerts and show movies. I think a couple of nights they have movie night there. Uh, during the day they do have like an open air market where they sell crafts and maybe produce and stuff like that. But they also have a fishing pier located in the park. And the Bay Creek Park is located right beside, located right beside the Edisto uh, Marina. And there is a boat landing at the marina in case you want to put your boat in. I think they charge $5. But at the uh, Bay Creek Park at the pier, we went fishing there one night. Caught a few little little fish, nothing major. Um, I think I caught a uh, kingfish or also, people also call it a whiting. Caught an oyster toadfish. And then I caught... Um, a stingray or skate I'm not sure which one it was but uh, that was pretty fun and uh, I did also fish do some surf fishing and um, I didn't ever catch anything from the surf but each about every 200 yards there's these uh, pile of rocks with a talon in it and uh, what I would do is sometimes when the tide was down I would walk across those rocks and I would find rigs where people had broke them off you know, like the rigs that people use in salt water with a diamond-shaped weight, and they'll have the two hooks up above it. And usually, they have a stain or all that stainless steel. So, um, I found—I think we found three of those. I found one, and my father-in-law found two. And uh, but if you go, if you go there, that's a good place to uh, check out uh, when the water's down. Looking at those little crevices of rock, you can find some pretty cool stuff. We found a conch shell with a uh, crab in it. It was a pretty good size, one about the size of your hand. And the beach was pretty nice. It was kind of dirty there at the time we, we went, but there had been a lot of rain, so that's kind of to be expected. <clears throat> there is one uh, resort that's on, it's on the island. I think it's a Windham Resort. They do have a swimming pool there that you can stay in it. It has a golf course in it, too. Um... The bill fishing tournament was going on, the South Carolina Governor's Bill Fishing Tournament. That was pretty fun. That went on Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. Thursday night, we got there pretty early, about 4 o'clock, and we waited to the weigh-in. was at 5, and we watched the uh, weigh-in. We, we was anticipating them bringing in some, some big bill fish, like marlins, white marlins, blue marlins, swordfish, etc., but it, it's actually a catch-and-release tournament. The only time they bring anything in is, is if they're like really, really huge. If they're really, really huge, then they get the cat. The the boat gets like a big payout for that, something like eighty thousand dollars. Now these boats that's in these tournaments, they're like million dollar boats. And um, some of the cool facts about them that I've asked while I was there is that it takes like um, roughly about I don't know twenty six hundred gallons of fuel. And you heard that right, 2,600 gallons of diesel fuel to fill these boats up somewhere in the neighborhood of $3,000 plus to fill it up. They're, they're going 60 miles uh, from Edisto to, uh, 
to the uh, to the jetties, the uh, the Gulf Stream. So uh, it's pretty cool. They come in. Everybody that comes in, it takes them about an hour, hour and a half to clean their boat up. They wash wash it down, spray everything on the hole outside the boat uh, to get the salt water off of it to keep it from corroding because uh, the salt water is so, so corrosive. One of the cool things that we liked was looking at the names of the boats. Um, there was one called the Trash Man. There was one called Anticipation, which Anticipation uh, brought in a big fish last year and got the eighty thousand dollar payout. And there was a uh, one called Bad Becky, which was uh, the people we. My mom actually works for the the people who actually own that boat, so uh, it was kind of like a little tie in there. We didn't we didn't know it at the time when we went down there until we seen them and figured out who they were and all. But all in all, Edisto was really fun. Um, if I go back again, I want to go back in the fall time when it's much cooler and I can just kind of ride the bike more and uh, the heat's not so bearable, uh, unbearable, I mean. So, uh, hope y'all like this little video here. And uh, like I said, I hope it wasn't too boring. Just something I was trying to do a little different. And it's, like I said, it's kind of for my memories too, to, uh, to keep for my vacation. So we'll see y'all guys next time. We appreciate y'all stopping by. And remember, let's get food jump. Okay, right here off of Murray Street, right in the middle, kind of towards the end of uh, the island here. And it gets crowded really quick. It becomes highly recommended from lots of people. We gotta wait about 45 minutes for our group tonight.